installment of AA Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Toshiba Satellite 1605 CDS laptop computer. Now unlike a lot of the computers that we look at on this channel, I actually have a lot of personal experience with this laptop in particular. This is my family's laptop from the year 2000 to the year 2007 when the hard drive actually decided to kick the can um, and then we just retired the laptop as a whole because I didn't know anything about laptops or computers in general back then and no one else did. Um, so it just went to the attic and we bought a gateway uh, laptop with a dual core Athlon processor. I think I actually have it up here. Or, or was it Turion? Uh, one, one of the mobile processors. I can't recall it off the top of my head right now. Um, but it was one of the uh, nice new mobile processors with the dual core and it was really attractive and expensive as well. Um, so it was replaced by that. And if you're having amnesia and you think you've seen this laptop already on my channel, well, you have in a, you know, sort of way. This laptop was actually featured on my old channel and I decided to bring it back to this channel because why not? It hasn't been on this channel yet. A lot of my new subscribers haven't seen it. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to take it out of storage, bring it up, and we'll do a little overview on it. So let's go ahead and get started. So what exactly are we going to do today? Well, first I'm going to take you guys around this laptop and show you the cosmetic condition. And then we're going to go ahead and boot this up into a live Linux distribution such as damn small Linux or puppy Linux um, because the hard drive on this is dead and there's no way we're going to be able to get Windows up and running because it doesn't boot from a USB flash drive and there is a CD-ROM drive um, installed and I can't make a live uh, Windows installation like you can with Linux. Um, so we're going to probably run damn small Linux if I can find in my archives. If not, um, I'm going to have to go around and see if I can find a different lightweight Linux distribution. So let's go ahead and take a look around this laptop computer. Starting from the front of the laptop, you can see a CD-ROM drive and right below that is a 3.5 inch floppy drive. Moving over to the left, you can see the battery for this laptop. Um, I believe this is a NIMH battery uh, with a capacity just around 1000 milliamps. Uh, maybe more. I'm going to have to pop it out and take a look because a thousand milliamps actually sounds too small right now. So that's probably not right. Um, but we'll pop this battery out and take a look at it. Uh, of course it is dead because this computer is over 10 years old. So that battery is toast. And right above that, you can see the, la the latch for the laptop screen bezel. Moving up to the top of the laptop, you can see the Toshiba logo engraved into the plastic on the top. And right behind that are the LED indicators. You can see one for the power, one for the hard drive, one for battery, one for number lock, one for the um, caps lock, and then a few other notification LEDs uh, along with those. At the back of the laptop, you can see the air intake for the CPU heatsink along with a couple I.O. ports. There is a serial port, parallel port for printing, and then a VGA port for video out. And moving over to the right of all those, you can see our power jack plugged into the laptop and just pull that out. This is not the um, standard laptop power supply that I'm using. It's actually one that I'm using with um, a gateway laptop. I don't know exactly what model it is, but the standard, the original power supply is dead. Um, so I had to swap it out for this one. But you can see the power jack right there. And actually, if we take a closer look at these hinges, you can actually see, um, for the most part, this laptop is in pretty good condition, but there are some small blemishes here and there um, and some small faults. And this is just one of them. There is a crack in this hinge right here. And as expected with laptops like this, the, the hinges constantly crack. Uh, you see it all the time on older laptops. The plastic just snaps um, and then eventually the screen will just flap around um, freely. But this one on the other side looks all right. Uh, and you could probably get at least, I don't know, a couple more years out of this if you're actually using it. Looking at the left side of the laptop, you can see a cutout for the speaker, modem. There is a volume control right here. Headphone and microphone jacks are located right next to that. And above that, you can see two PCMIA card slots right here. Let me go ahead and pop those out. I don't think there are actual cards in here. I think these are just dummy cards. Yeah, this one is fake. Yeah, these are just um, card slot holders. So nothing in there. And then you can see a USB port, probably either version 1.0 or 1.1. On the opposite side, you can see a cutout for another speaker. There is a lock slot right here, PS2 port for either a keyboard or a mouse, and then the air outtake vent for the CPU heatsink. 
You are now looking at the bottom of the laptop, and this is where we're going to start pulling some stuff out, including the battery and the RAM. Um, but before we do any of that, I want to go ahead and let you guys take this Windows 98 code. I'm not sure if it's uh, been used or not, or if it's even still valid, but you can see it right there. Let me get that in focus. And if you so desire, you can go ahead and take that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the battery pack. I think to pull it out, all you have to do is pull back this latch and give it a nice tug. There we go. The battery pack is out. So what are we dealing with? This is a Toshiba nickel metal hydride battery pack with a capacity of 3,800 milliamps, outputting 10.8 volts DC. I'm going to go ahead and pop open this panel right here so we can see what kind of RAM the system is using. I believe it's using PC100 SD RAM and there should be around 160 megabytes in the system. Um, so let's go ahead and find out. So we are in and I believe I was right. Um, as I said earlier, there is a 128 megabyte stick installed inside the system and then there should be an additional 32 megabytes of RAM solder to the board itself. So when we go into the BIOS, it should state we have uh, around 160 megabytes of RAM installed on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this back together. We'll boot the system up and check out the system specifications in the BIOS. Before I turn this thing on and we go into the BIOS, I want to show you guys the cosmetic condition of the inside of this laptop. And as you can see, it's pretty much flawless. The keyboard is in great condition, none of the keys are missing, uh, they're all in one piece, the silk screening's still there, and we don't have that nasty shiny effect that you get after prolonged periods of use. So, um, keyboard looks great. The track point right here is a little worn down, but still in working order. Power button still works. Um, we, you know, you, there's still a nice click from the uh, mouse buttons right here. The screen is in great condition, no cracks or scratches or anything like that. The bezel itself is also in great condition. Um, besides the hinge issue that I showed you guys earlier, uh, everything inside is flawless. It looks great. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. When I first brought this laptop out of storage a couple days ago, I was having issues with the monitor. For some reason, um, it would turn on and then the backlight would just cut off. So I, went, I hooked it up to an external monitor, went to the BIOS and reset all the settings and that actually helped, um, well actually fixed the problem, which is weird. I have no idea what settings got changed or what happened there, uh, but I just reset the BIOS and everything works fine now. So I'm going to go ahead and boot it up and we shouldn't have that problem. And I believe it's F2 to get into the BIOS, so that's what I'm going to hit. Yes, we want, okay, there we go. So we're running an AMD K6 processor at 400 megahertz, uh, 160 megabytes of RAM. We have 512 kilobytes of cache on this processor. Um, what else can we see? I'm gonna wait until we get into the actual BIOS to read off the rest of the specs. specs. Ugh. <laughs> Come on, you can do a computer. There we go, and we are on. Uh, so we can see the three and a half inch floppy drive. It is registering right there. Um, hard disk and none because the hard disk is dead, so it's not detecting it. Um, extended memory, we have 160 megabytes, as I said earlier. For some reason, this isn't showing the processor, which is weird. What else can I check out here? I'm just gonna switch through these pages so you guys can see everything. And it's detecting our CD-ROM drive as well. Um, you can see it right there. And I mean, really that's about it for our system specifications. So AMD K6 running at 400 megahertz. Um, we have 160 megabytes of PC100 RAM on the system. Um, I believe this is, it didn't show it earlier, but I believe this computer is running ATI Rage um, graphics. I'm not sure which version of that. Um, I'll have to actually look, I'll look that up online and throw in an annotation or mention it later when we actually boot up into an operating system, because I'm sure Linux will actually show us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and find that live operating system. Um, hopefully it'll be damn small Linux because that runs really well on this PC. Um, and then we can boot up and check out some more specs and run some tests on this computer as well. So let's go ahead and take that live distro out. I went digging through my archives and unfortunately I couldn't find damn small Linux, but I did find something just as good. This is Wari Puppy version 5.5. This is a very lightweight version of Puppy Linux. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this into the PC and hopefully this works. Because as I recall, I tried a couple versions of Puppy Linux and a lot of them were not functional of this computer. I can't recall why though. But I think since I kept this one, 
it should work with this PC. I think that's why I kept it actually. So I'm going to throw it in now and I'm going to let it run and see if it actually boots up into the OS. All right, well that version of Puppy Linux worked just fine and we are in the live operating system right now. And as you can see, I have my wireless mouse hooked up to the USB port and you can see the cursor moving around right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. And let's take a look around this operating system and see what this system can do. First, let's go ahead and start off with just some basic applications and I'll move on to something a little bit more taxing like a stress test or maybe a game or two. Um, but the first application I'm going to open is a word processor. I believe this is a version of A by Word, if I'm correct. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And that wasn't bad. I think it might have already been loaded into the RAM, actually, because I didn't hear the CD-ROM drive spin up when I clicked on the icon. And you can see I'm typing right now, and that works just fine. Can I highlight? I'm going to manipulate the text just a little bit. Can I change the font size or the font family? Um, oh, now now the um, CD-ROM drive spun up. So I'm guessing all the features aren't loaded in. <laughs> Here we go. Underline it, italicize it, and that all works just fine and dandy. There is a drawing application also installed on this operating system, so I'm going to go ahead and pop that open. This one is not loaded into the RAM, it sounds like, because I just heard the CD-ROM drive spin up. And I'm not exactly sure how to use this. This looks like a pencil tool right, tool right here, so maybe if I just click that and start dragging around. There we go. I don't know what I'm drawing. Can I maximize this? There we go. But you can see that's responsive. I mean, I really have no clue how to use this uh, this paint application. What is this, a stamp? Ooh, I can add stars. Ooh, it's fancy. Look at that. I can rotate it, scale it down, change the size. And that's working just fine. So I'm going to close out of this. No, I don't want to save those changes because I have no idea what I just did. Oh, there's also, okay, there's a draw application, there's a paint application. What's the difference? I'm going to open up the paint application because I'm curious. They may just be the same thing. Oh, okay. They're actually something different, so I'm going to open this up. And what can I do here? <laughs> Once again, I have no idea how to use this application. Is there a paintbrush? Oh, there's a pencil. There we go. So I'm pretty sure they're about the same thing. This this application looks like it might have a little bit more functionality. Um, but I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Nope. Loose changes. I don't care. Let's move on to something else. So our file manager is on the top left corner. I just opened that. I opened two of them by mistake. So let's just navigate through the file system real quick. Um, about puppy reference documents let me just scroll down there that's working just fine so it's just getting kind of boring I want to move on to something a little bit more exciting in just a second um, the last thing I'm going to do with these basic applications is just open a web browser and that'll be it and of course the system isn't connected to the internet I have no way of connecting it to the internet I've actually tried to use a wireless adapter through the USB port and it just wasn't working um, so I gave up on that 
but the browser will still open and we can see the load time and that kind of thing and how responsive it is. I think it just comes up with a Warrior Puppy welcome page and um, that's about it. So CMonkey is already running but it's not responding. To open a new window you must first close the existing CMonkey process or restart your system. Okay, what's up with this? I'm going to check this out. So all I had to do was close out the dialog box and CMonkey popped right open and now we are in the web browser. As I said earlier, we can't go on any sites because it's not connected to the actual internet, um, but we can scroll through the welcome page um, and see that the browser is somewhat responsive on this old computer. We just scroll through all of the menus. Every, everything seems to be working just fine. I mean, if you added some extensions on here, such as Flash, or maybe you're using a Java application within the web, the web browser, I'm sure it would crash. Um, because once again, this system only has 160 megabytes of RAM and it's running an AMD K6 only at 400 megahertz. So you're really limited in terms of what you can actually do on the internet, but I'm sure this would be fine just browsing, you know, just doing some Google searches or, or maybe going through Wikipedia or something like that. At this point, I'm starting to bore myself, and that means you guys are probably bored as well, so we're going to move on to something a little bit more entertaining. Let's go ahead and open a game or two. Um, under fun, you can see there are three games. Uh, the jigsaw puzzle game is really just exactly what it sounds like. It's a, it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's not really that exciting. But under it, these two are actually kind of fun. Um, this ex-soldier game is actually a space shooter, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. It's probably the most um, graphically uh, intense out of the three. So if I can remember how to play this, um, it should come up with a control dialog box in just a second to tell me how to actually play it. Okay, up, down, how do I shoot? Oh, shot is shift L. All right, so I think I can do this, shift L. What just happened? Oh, there we go. Oh, left shift, oh, left shift, okay, <laughs> got it. All right. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I see stuff blowing up, so I guess that's good. And the graphics on this computer are actually functioning pretty uh, decently right now. I'm trying to concentrate on this game and talk at the same time. So we're gonna play this for probably 30 more seconds, maybe. Um, and then move on. Oh my god, what is this? Whoa, alright. Alright, alright. Wow. Alright, I don't stand a chance. Wow, I'm awful. Oh, okay. Alright, well I feel like it can be really repetitive. It's just going to be the same thing over and over again. So let's go ahead and move on to that Rubik's Cube game. And I died anyway, so. Now is the time. So this Rubik's Cube game is just a 3 day Rubik's Cube that you can manipulate with your mouse. And as you can see, I am playing it right now. If I click, I can move whichever side is facing towards me. And I've never been really good with Rubik's Cube, so there's no way I'm going to be able to solve this. But I just want to show you guys, um, demo the application for just a couple more seconds, and then we can move on to some stress tests. And actually, when you're looking at this, this there does seem to be some sort of latency with the uh, refresh rate of this monitor. You can just see the previous image when you move the Rubik's Cube around. I'm not sure if it's coming out on camera. Um, I'm looking at it right now and I think it is. Um, so you guys should be seeing, seeing the same thing I am. And it's kind of odd. I think it's just the uh, generic Linux drivers that this uh, operating system is using. And it's affecting the uh, refresh rate of the monitor. But we're not going to stay on this all day, so let's move on to some CPU stress tests. So I'm in Worry Puppy's system information application right now, which gives us a ton of options and a lot of information on the system. Um, if I just scroll down here, you can see it will give us um, information on all the system devices. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But first, you can just see how lightweight this operating system actually is. We're only using 60 megabytes of the 160 megabytes of RAM installed on this PC. So it's a very efficient operating system. If we had more RAM, we could actually load the entire operating system into the RAM, um, and this would just be blazing fast. Uh, but this system just doesn't have enough RAM for that, so <laughs> obviously we don't want to use up all the RAM. 
um, because that would just slow things down instead of speeding things up. So taking a look at the processor, as I said earlier, we're running at 400 megahertz effectively. Um, anything else interesting? I'm, I'm scrolling down, you guys can read this yourselves too. But anything that catches my eye, I'm gonna shout out. Memory, I doubt, it's, yeah, memory, it's just showing us the same thing that we saw earlier. PCI devices, is it gonna give us anything for that? Oh, okay. Um, anything interesting though, scrolling down. Oh, we can see our video controller right here, our ATI Technologies 3D Rage LT Pro AGP-133. Um, that is our video adapter. Does it give us any more information on that? Oh, we have 16 megabytes of just pure video memory, so that's pretty neat. All right, nothing much else. Sensors, I doubt we have any sensors. Memory, oh, no. Okay, so that's enough of that, but if I scroll down here, you can actually see this computer or this um, information application comes with a couple benchmarks. So I'm gonna run some of these right now. The first one I'm gonna run is the CPU Blowfish benchmark. So I'm just gonna click on that. It should load it. Here we go. Benchmarking, please do not move your mouse or press any keys. All right, taking my hands off the system. Okay, so the CPU Blowfish benchmark just finished, and as you can see, this benchmark compares this processor to relatively new um, CPU. So the newest one being a Core 2 Quad um, Q6700. And as we scroll down, you can see <laughs> that our CPU is all the way at the bottom, just below the Intel Celeron M processor at 1.4 gigahertz, which scored still a lot higher than this AMD K6. And that's scoring an 80.94. This one's scoring a 91.17. So, yeah, definitely bottom of the barrel. Um, in my opinion, this CPU is only running at 400 megahertz, and it did only score 10 points lower than the Intel Celeron M, uh, which is at 1.4 gigahertz. Um, so, just from my perspective, I think that's kind of impressive, but I'll leave you guys um, to determine that. Let's move on to one more benchmark, and this one I think is going to maybe pin the CPU up against older CPU. So let's go ahead and get to that. All right, so the final benchmark that I'm gonna run is the CPU crypto hash benchmark. And I've actually just finished running it uh, because I didn't wanna capture the footage and waste memory and battery and all that. So you can see the AMD K6 right here. It's just under the Intel Celeron M processor running at 900 megahertz. Um, it's about 10 points away, which isn't bad. Again, that's expected. This processor is older and only running at 400 megahertz. So and it's a mobile processor on top of that. But right below that is a Via Esther uh, running at 1,500 megahertz, and I'm pretty sure that's a hardware controller. Isn't that a hardware controller? I don't know, I could be wrong. I feel like that's not a processor and that's actually a hardware controller and they just put that in here um, for relativity's sake, but I'm not sure. You guys can leave that. Uh, you guys can post that in the comment section if you know anything about that. But as we scroll up, you can see that this benchmark also compares uh, this processor up against relatively new processors, for example, a uh, eight-core Intel i7 processor, uh, model number 920. But obviously, that's going to blow this processor way out of the water. It's like 400 points above. We're going to ignore that rating. But that's going to be it for our benchmarks. I think I'm going to call it on this video. Okay, so I think that's going to be about it for this overview on this Toshiba satellite laptop. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, do not forget to like this video. I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology. Thanks for watching.